Hello again, everybody. By this point, hopefully you've worked through module one and done the homework for that module. Watch the videos and you have a better understanding of 1D kinematics terms, displacement, position, speed, velocity, acceleration, um, motion dot diagrams, uh, position versus time graphs, velocity versus time graphs. So there's a whole lot in module one. Now we're gonna get into the equations and we're going to see how we can apply the kinematics equations, which here I'll click over. There are the kinematics equations that we're going to be using. And these are the same ones that are on your equation sheet. Okay, and these are presented in chapter two in your textbook. And so what are the various ways that we can use these equations? Well, for a roller coaster, and this is one of those electromagnetic start roller coasters. So you're sitting there, you're waiting, you're waiting, somebody pushes a button, and all of a sudden you take off, and you're, you're speeding up really rapidly. And a lot of those go from 0 to 60 in, I don't know, like 3 seconds. And so what we could do is we could figure out, okay, well, if you go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3 seconds, how far along the track are you by the time you get to 60 seconds? And these are, well, these and more complicated calculations are necessary um, for the roller coaster designers so that they know how much track to to build for that straightaway while you're speeding up just as a really small example of of the intricate things that they have to do um, to make a an exciting and a safe roller coaster all right we'll talk more about roller coasters when we get to chapter six um, circular motion all right but here we are 1D kinematics, like I said, we could figure out how long that track would need to be to get you up to 60 miles per hour. Uh, another example of a problem you can solve with 1D kinematics equations is a, a catch-up problem, meaning there's one car that is going along and the other car is trying to catch up to it. For example, and I know neither of these cars looks like a, a top fuel dragster, but let's just pretend... Um, that this red car is the dragster, and then this other car um, is, is still a fast car. It's gonna, this blue car drives past the red car, which is stationary. So the blue car is driving along, constant speed of 150 miles per hour. And then the person in the red car, okay, and this is a top fuel dragster, which they can really speed up very quickly. They don't do anything for the first half a second. So the person in the blue car gets a half second head start, plus they're already up to speed. They're already going 150 miles per hour. So they have two advantages. Can the red car, can the top fuel dragster catch the blue car? And if so, how long is it going to take? Well, using some data and some information that we know about top fuel dragsters, we can solve this problem, and it turns out that the red car is going to be able to catch that car that's going 150 miles per hour in just under four seconds. That's phenomenal. It happens around 400 meters, okay, 380 some meters. And that's something that we can calculate out because we can apply these kinematics equations to the blue car and we can apply them to the red car, and then we can see when are their positions going to be the same. The x values, when are they going to be the same? And that's a rather complex application. We're going to start off in this module with much easier examples, more like the roller coaster example I was talking about. Um, here's another example uh, related to red lights, or more importantly, yellow lights. You may not have thought about it before, but there is science that goes into determining how long the yellow light should be. Not all yellow lights are the, the same duration. On a higher speed limit road, the yellow light needs to be longer. Because if, it's, if, if you're obeying the speed limit, you're going right at the speed limit, and the light turns yellow, well, you need to have enough time to either stop Okay, you need to be able to stop safely before 
you get into the intersection, or you need to be able to make it all the way through the intersection before the light turns red. And if they don't make the yellow light long enough, it's actually in there, there is a certain uh, range of places on along the road before the red light or before the traffic light where it's impossible for you to do either one of those if the yellow light's not long enough. And so there's science that goes into that. Okay, and so that uh, problem could be rather complex, but we could also give you uh, examples where we ask you to find out will they be able to stop before the yellow light in time? And you can use these kinematics equations to determine that. So let's just go through each of these symbols, make sure you understand what they mean. So x is position and delta x is displacement. How much did the position change? Okay, and this could also be written as x minus x naught. So x, final position, x naught, original position or initial position. Delta t, that's just how much time elapses during the time that we're analyzing. V naught x is the initial velocity in the x direction. That's a vector, and so it could have a positive or a negative sign. V sub x is the final velocity in the x direction. Okay. So initial and final velocities, and these are instantaneous velocities. Okay, and we divide them by two. When we divide, when we add them up, divide by two, we get the average velocity. Okay, and this over here, this also gives us the average velocity. But these individual ones right here, those are instantaneous velocities. And I should point out that all of all of these equations right here, these are only for uniformly accelerated motion. In other words, the acceleration has to be constant in, in a, in, um, for us to be able to use these equations. Okay, And so that's what we're going to be studying in this chapter. And so don't feel like you have to decide each time. But if it says that the acceleration changed from, from one part of the problem to the next part, then you need to make sure you apply these equations to, well, to the one part first and then to the other part separately. You can't mix it all together and just analyze the entire time frame if there were two different accelerations. All right, speaking of acceleration, a sub x is the acceleration in the x direction. And we're using all these subscripts of x on there because when we get to chapter three, we're gonna be looking at two-dimensional motion. And so then it'll be even more important that we have those subscripts there because we'll have these same equations but with y's replacing all the x's. But we don't need to worry about that yet. But that's why they're in there. Okay, t is the time. And so that's, we could, we could calculate the position of the object at any time that we choose. So we could fill in x naught and v naught x and ax. And then we could, we could do this equation 100 times. We could find out where the object was after one second. So we put in one second there and one second there, calculate. We could do it at two seconds, three seconds, a hundred seconds, a thousand seconds, whatever we want to do, we can apply that at any time t. Same thing here, we can calculate the velocity at any time t, or we can solve any of these equations algebraically and solve for other things other than what they're solved for here. This final equation doesn't have time in it, so sometimes you'll get to a situation where you don't have the time and you don't need to calculate the time and that equation can be quite useful for those situations. All right, well, I hope you enjoy this chapter. Uh, it takes practice to get used to picking out these equations, but with practice, you will get better. So keep at it, ask questions. I'm here to help you.